Hi, this is Ben Schwellen. Did you know that a Welsh princess is buried in the heart of London? Catherine Verglindur. Who was she? Well, I'll tell you that and I'll show you where she's buried in London. Hey, hit that subscribe button. What was Catherine Verglindur a princess of? Well, actually what's more important is what she almost became queen of. She almost became queen of all of South England, very close to doing so. But to answer the question, she was for a time a princess of Wales. Not recognized by all, but for a time recognized by France. And her father was what made this possible. She was descended from Owen Glendur on one side, who came from the Welsh aristocracy, descended from the Welsh princes before the conquest period. And her mother was Margaret Hanmer, who was descended from Welsh princes and powers as well, and Norman lords. So you have quite the upper class lady here, descended from royalty on both sides. <laughs> The defining event of Catherine Verklindur's life to understand, in order to know who she was, was the fact that she was caught up in the longest running national revolt or rebellion of the Middle Ages. This revolt of her father, Glendur, lasted over 15 years. This was a war that destroyed Wales, burning entire sections of the country into ash. And there would not be another war of its like of a rebellious nature that lasted so long until the 20th century, in Europe at least, when the Basques fought Franco. And so to understand her life, you have to put it in the context of one of the longest running insurgencies in history. But it's not unusual in another aspect. She was very much a woman of her age because during this time, across Europe, there were armed uprisings in almost every country you can think of. From the period of the 1370s, going all the way into about 1420 or so, this was a period of economic instability after having seen plagues and people were rising up in armed revolution peasants and lower ranking aristocrats, sometimes establishing new kingdoms. You have rebellions in Bulgaria against the Ottomans, in Flanders kicking out the French, the Scottish Wars of Independence, Mircea the Older in Romania, using guerrilla tactics and mobilizing peasants against the Ottomans there. Estonia sees a revolt. You have revolts in France, the peasant revolt in England, a revolt in Florence, lasting a few years. France again, revolutions in Hungary. And in Sweden, a revolt actually set up a, a kind of Congress, which created the beginnings of Swedish democracy. And south of France, again in France and Silesia, present day Poland, it was German speaking lands, there was a major revolt there. So Catherine was engaged in the spirit of her age. She was a woman of her age in that regard. We don't know her character, but we know that the events she was caught up in were very much of her time. Catherine would marry Edmund Mortimer IV, who came from a long dynasty of martyr lords who had traditionally attacked Wales. But when Mortimer led an army into Wales to try and defeat Owen Glendur, Owen Glendur defeated him at the Battle of Glass. The King of England thought Mortimer had been intentionally captured by his own design by Owen Glendur, and so he refused any ransom whatsoever to help him get out of that situation. In response, Mortimer turned to the side of Owen Glendur's rebellion, 
and this was a huge boost for that rebellion and the fortunes of Catherine Verklendur, who it was agreed would marry him. And with Mortimer's brother-in-law, Percy, they agreed to divide the Kingdom of England between the three of them. And Catrin Verklendur with her husband would take all of South England and Cornwall as their own kingdom. Had the rebellion succeeded, she would have become perhaps a queen of significant standing in the world. And it's quite ironic that she's buried in London in South England because this would have been the kingdom of her husband. Welsh is the inheritance of all of Britain and this would have been very prominent in Catherine's life as her father launched a rebellion, often using echoes of mythology from the Welsh past, the distant Welsh past. And she would have been very astute to what marrying Mortimer meant. Not that she could have the kingdom of her husband in South England, but that she could reclaim the kingdom of her ancestors, the native Britons, who once held sway over all of Britain. So there was a bit of deep, deep propaganda going on in marrying her off to this man. And everyone involved would have been very aware of what they were doing at the time with reference to their past as a Welsh and British people. Her husband Mortimer fell at the siege of Harlech, this place, and she was eventually captured and brought into, we think, a period of slavery, which she didn't make it out of very well, and she died not long after. Catherine was buried here at St. Swithian's in the garden here near Cannon Street in London. The church did not survive the fire of 1666, 250 years after her. And the church, it was rebuilt and then it was damaged in the Second World War and then torn down. So there's not really anything left of the church itself, but the churchyard itself did survive. And this is what this monument here has been built in, that original churchyard. So we know that she was buried here from some documents given about payment of burial. On this monument is a couple lines of poetry by the Welsh poet Mena Elvin. This is called Awel Dawel Rachdid, an exile's silent song. Hear those words there in Welsh. Godre tur adre nidaith, ariai haru wiu hiraith. And what that means is, at the tower's edge, far away from home, longing is a woman's song. And that word hiraith in Welsh is quite deep in meaning. It's a bit more than longing. It's a bit that can only really attach itself to that sense of place in a way that includes Wales. And this poem being in Welsh in London is really important because Welsh is the closest thing we have to the indigenous British language. And Welsh has the truest and most honest claim to a continuance of that indigenous culture on this island, which was spoken across the island. And it's very good that that Welsh is there in London. And I hope if you visit London, you go and see this. And there are other bits of Welsh culture sprinkled across other parts of Britain that are not just in Wales. Because Welshness isn't just Welshness, it's, it's a deeper part of Britishness that's a key part of the island's identity as a whole. When her father, Owen Glendur, rose up against the English crown to establish an independent kingdom, she would have been accustomed to quite a comfortable life. This would have been a very rugged period for her, considering how long the war lasted against England and ultimately failing. Not all wars of independence succeed, and her life in later years was quite dark. The war of her father failed. Catherine suffered a period of slavery after her capture and the conditions were quite miserable in this Tower of London and it is probably what led to her death, but her death is under mysterious circumstances. You can imagine how a rebel princess might have been treated unfairly in the arms of her captors. We don't know 
The exact cause of her death is a mystery. Thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to ask me any questions about Katrin Verk Glendur or Owen Glendur, her father's national revolt, I'd be happy to talk with you about that in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next episode. Dear